Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise, and myself, Jason, bringing you whiskey review number 59, where today we're going to review something a little different on my channel, which is an independently bottled whiskey from Malta, Scotland, which is actually distributed through Bartels Whiskey. Uh, I think they're called Malta, Scotland, UK, where they actually distribute it, but independently bottled Dalmore, which is something I got to try when I was here at the Harrow Whiskey Festival. If you haven't seen that, I put a, a write-up for that one in my blog, and I'm actually going to leave a link to my blog in the description, so be sure to check that out. But this is a Dalmore that's one of the oldest Dalmores I tried, and I was bowled over. So I sent them a message, and they asked me, would you like to have a sample? And of course, I'm, I said yes, so we can actually do it in a video review. So I'm going to pour this one out, and we'll begin with my review style structure. So there we go. Now this is a 21-year-old Dalmore. The actual full name of it is Malta Scotland Dalmore 1996, 21 year old, and I believe the cast number is 73003. So that's the full name of it. I'll actually leave probably the name of it in the, as the title of the video, and if you want, you can have a search online. I have been told by them though this morning that it is very difficult to find because it's almost completely sold out everywhere. So, do check in some places, you might find it in some places in Europe. I've actually sourced out a bottle in Germany, uh, so they did tell me it was sold out, but I found a bottle this morning in Germany, so I will be going to pick that one up. Uh, but not to jump the gun in my review just yet, so we'll get into the review style structure. So this whiskey is a 21 year old whiskey, it's bottled at an ABV of 57.4% ABV, very powerful stuff over there. Uh, the cast selection they do use on this one, it's stated on here, is a Sherry HHD, which must mean a hogshead cast. And uh, the distillery it's from is the Dalmore Distillery. Uh, the main bottler is a Malts of Scotland, and it's distributed through Bartel Whiskey, or as they call themselves, the second company, um, Malts of Scotland uh, UK. Now, in terms of the region itself, it is from the Highlands, as it's an independently bottled whiskey, and the price on this one is £144.95, which I saw on Master Malt, and I'm paying a little bit more than that because I am getting it sourced out, so that is the uh, price going. It's around about £150. Now, in terms of the actual production of the amount of bottles, is it exclusive? Yes, it is. It is limited to 225 bottles globally, worldwide. And in terms of caramel color, no coloring is added. So this is a Dalmore, which is all completely natural. Now have a look at that. That's how a natural Dalmore should look. And I have tried the Dalmore 21, which is part of their normal core range of Dalmores. And, and I'm gonna compare that one at the end with this one, which is independently bottled. And effectively a third of the price compared to the regular Dalmore. So we'll begin our assessment by assessing the color of this one. And on this one, I'm gonna go with a quite deep mahogany. I'm gonna see if I can just take myself out of the picture. Uh, then you can see that over there it is quite a deep mahogany, so it's very dark, and this is all natural colour. Wow, beautiful nose. Anyway, let's get into the nosing of the whiskey, so into the first assessment. To begin my first initial impression on the first nosing, this one is a very heavily sherried whiskey, and I'm talking a lot of very rich, heavy, dry fruits into this one. You're talking about raisins, sticky dates, figs, uh, no sultanas on the nose, surprisingly but very, very heavy and sort of just like you get them fresh out of a packet, they're all there with the juicy characters. It's one I'd classify as a definite sherry bomb of a whiskey and it just reminds me of how Dalmore possibly should be instead of it being uh, completely altered. I'm gonna have a second nose and pick up slightly nuttier characters. A little bit of nutmeg over there and a bit of a walnut. But yeah, I'm gonna have a second nosing, see what other notes I can pick out. It does need a little time just to open it out. So from the second nosing, I'm picking out a definite nuttier character and it sort of develops more nuttier character as you leave it to open out and breathe this whiskey. So I'm getting a little bit of hints of nutmeg, as I mentioned before, walnuts and sort of toasted hazelnuts. Not smoky, but just sort of softly toasted and giving it a little bit of a that distinctive aroma. Now behind that, you are getting a little burst of citrus, sort of like a sweet tangerine just right behind that. And then you're picking out a slight sort of red pear, but more covered in a jacket of honey giving a nice sweetness, but at the same time that nice fruitier note behind it. So really interesting on the nose, very complex. Really, really nice and definitely not your character does develop the longer you leave it. So next we'll move into the palate for this whiskey. So into the palate. So to begin my first initial thoughts on the palate of this whiskey is quite medium full in texture. It's not so heavy, not so rich, 
not masses of sweetness, but it does have that ABV, which you don't get so much on the nose of this whiskey, but more it's punchier on the palate. A lot of fruitier notes, spicier notes. To begin, you're looking at sort of warming spices. You're looking at ginger, not so sweet ginger. This is like ginger, sort of straight cut, very sort of mouth warming, a little bit of pungent note to it, sort of a bit of clove, a little bit of peppery note as well, but it's not then sort of fading away and you get sort of a sort of spiced woody note. So a little bit of cinnamon bark and a little bit of cedar wood. So quite richness from the cast really imparting itself into the palate of this whiskey quite a bit. And then you get a little bit of a softer, bittery, sweeter note, which is like cocoa powder, which makes way for a mocha coffee a little bit chocolatey, and then a little bit of a fruitier aspect behind, which uh, reminds me of those dark cherries. I think they're maraschino and maraschino. Those dark cherries, you guys must be know exactly what I'm thinking about. And then like what reminds me of dark grapes, uh, really getting those tannins notes on the, the back of the palate and the mid palate. So very interesting on the actual palate for this whiskey. Next, we'll move into the finish and give my final thoughts. So into the finish. So into the finish of this whiskey, I was checking out the little miniature, but from the finish, a lot of richness, very fruity, red fruits actually, more towards currants and black currants, a little bit of dried cranberries coated in a jacket of dark chocolate, but very rich dark chocolate, giving the sweeter, slightly bitter notes with a fruitier combination and a slight oakiness that works for itself through the middle of the palate right onto the end, leaving, I'd say a fair medium long finish. It's not super long, but it's definitely got such a nice character to it, which I think is fantastic. So I'm going to give my rating for this whiskey, and uh, I'm going to go with this, because by far it is one of the most best Dalmors I have tasted till today. One of the best. I have tried another Dalmore, which I'm not going to mention the name of, but it's not 21 years, but it's just up there for me. But anyway, in terms of this one, Malts of Scotland, Dalmore 21, 1996 bottling. Yeah. This one, very nice, rich, nice complex flavors in this whiskey. You've got a lot going on. The ABV on the nose doesn't feel so present, but then as you work your way through into the palate and onto the finish, you definitely get the richness from the cask and how the way it plays. Distinct fruity character. I just wish Dalmore made their whiskeys like this, the core Dalmore, but uh, in terms of independent bottles, this is superb stuff. If you can find yourself a bottle, I have been told it's very, very limited now. Uh, do have a search for it. If you can pick it up, by all means, this is something you're going to love if you love the rich sherry bombs. Really powerful, fantastic whiskey. It's still lingering a little bit on the palate. So, great stuff over there. Um, by all means, I want to thank the guys as well for giving me this sample, but as it's pretty much sold out, doesn't really make a difference. Uh, giving it 90 out of 100, let me know your thoughts. In terms of water, I personally wouldn't add water. You don't really need it. Uh, maybe if you find the ADV a bit too sharp, then you can. Uh, in terms of time, if you give it longer time, the what I've notes I've written is the more time you give it, the more nuttier it does develop on the palate and onto the nose. So that's one that you can avoid. And in terms of value for money, effectively 140, 150 pounds. Uh, comparing it to the Dalmore 21, which is the core bottling, 330 to 350. This is effectively 200 pounds cheaper, which is two thirds of the price, well, a third of the price. So you're getting so much more and you're not getting any of that caramel color and all that stuff that Dalmore do in the whiskey. And you're getting something that's cast strength as well. So on that note, definite value for money compared to the Dalmore 21. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. If you have enjoyed the review, by feel free to drop it a like, be sure to subscribe. And this has been Jason Whiskey Wise. I'll leave a couple other videos related to independent bottles over here. This has been Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video.